We're recording, uh, baby. Uh, we're recording. We are recording. <laughs> we are recording. All right, uh, this is the beginning of the Dobson Trail and Riverview. And uh, we've never done the trail. I uh, haven't seen much video on it, so we're going to give it a try and uh, take you along with us. And you can see if it's uh, worthy of something to consider at some point. So we'll update you on the way. Ground transportation provided by the Ford Focus, the official car of this expedition. <laughs> Okay, so we're at the four kilometer marker um, on the Dobson Trail. The trail's been pretty uh, easy at the start, uh, but now it's starting to be a little bit harder with root sections and uh, some elevation change. So uh, we're going to the 19.4 kilometer marker tonight and uh, camping up there. Oh yeah, we also have the, the Dobson Trail guide here. Uh, it's really, really like descriptive of uh, kilometer markers and uh, elevation. It also has like uh, descriptions on the campsites with water um, and how big the the site is it also comes with the map of the trail and uh, that's where we based the, the trip off Time to take an alternate route. So a couple uh, kilometers past the transmission line, there's um, a bit of a brook. And you come up the hill a little bit on a trail. Ah, quite a quite a trail. And uh, we got going a little bit farther and there was a lot of windfalls and realized we not, may not be on the trail. And we missed the marker to come off. And you can see what it looks like. And off to the right, there's a trail. And the marker is up in the tree there. We'll, we'll uh, break those off, those branches. Might be a little bit more visible, but it continues to go on following uh, alongside the, uh, the brook here. So we're on the trail again. Nice, nice in the shade. Show my mom this. There's a nice marsh. It's probably seven or eight kilometers in. Eight kilometers, brand new sign. Kind of a lake, I guess. I guess it could be a little bit swampy here uh, when it was wet. What's that, Peter? It could be swampy here and it was wet. Yes. But here we are the 2nd of August and it's been dry now for yes. quite a few weeks, so. This is uh, one end of that uh, pond or lake. It's supposed to be, but it seems to be uh, dried up. A little bit swampy here. Well, not really. It's all dried up a lot. Could be a lot worse. <laughs> I think in the trail guide it says uh, you should be able to see a blue uh, blaze uh, from one to the other, and uh, they're not too far off. You can see them in the distance there. It's uh, w really well marked. Here's a section here that's through a pine stand. Really nice. Bit of a breeze flowing. Yeah, really nice. Just going to add a, a capsule here, purification tablet. This is the, uh, the water, and you'll see the tannin color in it. 
received that or just got it out of this little brook here, just past uh, kilometer 10. So uh, we're just going to add the capsule, let it dissolve, and uh, we should have some good drinking water within the next uh, 10 or 15 minutes. Okay. Um, I couldn't send more than 300. Couldn't send more than what? There are several places where the trail comes out onto access points. This is one of them. Uh, I'm guessing it's around uh, kilometer 12. Uh, hydro lines. And then uh, there we go, back in the other side. Coming up to the big pine. That's huge. Yeah, we've got another road crossing. Look both ways. And we're good. Looks like blueberries for the granola in the morning. So the trail guide says uh, cross from pole number four, there's a bit of a trail. And actually there wasn't. It's, uh, you go up to the corner here, and across from pole eight, uh, it looks like a um, snowmobile trail like I talked about. And then the Dobson Trail. So it might have been, uh, they put new poles in and renamed them, renumbered them, but uh, that one there is number eight. And we're heading into here. What's uh, for supper tonight, guys? I'm having. Uh, creamy mushroom and beef. Yeah. So it looks pretty good. Uh, just added the water. We're going to let it sit and uh, absorb all the water and tenderize the noodles and then we'll be chowing down here shortly. I'm having uh, smokehouse chicken with rice. How about you, Peter? I'm having the Thai chicken with yeah, noodles. Quite a, quite a menu here tonight. Yeah. So this is uh, the campsite at uh, kilometer 19 point something. Point four, yeah. The scouts apparently set it up. And you can see there's a stand back there that we're using for um, packs. And then there is a bit of a brook right over to my right. It's a pretty good flow of water and uh, quite clear too compared to some of the other sources we had today. One was quite uh, dark with cannon, um, but this seems to be the best so far. Pretty clear. Haha, <laughs> yeah, very clear. Yeah. Yeah. Philip, what was the highlight uh, for you or what was your impression of the trail? I guess, Peter, not knowing what it was going to be like and, and when you read the brochure and the, uh, the trail, um, the plan or whatever, it uh, it talks about the different levels and the different kilometers that you're going to. So that was a great guide as far as, far as that. Uh, we knew exactly at what kilometer we were looking for what. Uh, and I'm like you, I, I did enjoy the mixed forest. Lots of hardwood, softwood mixes, uh, in over some bogs, uh, some water, some water going through there. Surprised you didn't see any moose with all the all the water in the bog areas that was there. So looking forward to tomorrow. Um, I don't know whether we're going to be into the same the same type of forest or not but uh, I noticed that we're going to get into some hardwood tomorrow so be interesting to go through that and uh, and today with that breeze going through the hardwood it was it was refreshing for sure. So good day. We had a good day today. Yeah.
How you feeling this morning? A lot better. Yeah? Yeah. Good. Start of day two, uh, August the 3rd. Getting an earlier start today, probably around 8 o'clock, so uh, we plan on doing another 20 kilometers today and maybe more. See, see how we're all feeling, so we're off on our adventure. Another beautiful sunny day, Dobson Trail. <laughs> the trail's over here though, right? <laughs> Well, we just uh, finished hiking down a long stretch of dirt road, the end of section four, and I guess we're supposed to hit this paved road, turn right, and then turn, go across the bridge, and then uh, head left. Crossing Turtle Creek and uh, taking a left up here. This is the, just the beginning of section five. After uh, we go up the trail past the gravel pit, this is the type of trail that uh, we're on so far. Little brook off to the left. Once you hit the Prosser Brook Road, that's the end of section five. Uh, section six is diagonally across from uh, the road. It's almost behind the Kent Hills Wind Farm sign. Section six, probably around uh, 34, 33 kilometers. So after we came across that mossy brook, I uh, came across a road. There's no indication on the map or trail guide which way to go, but a little looking and right across the road here, you can see it down in there, 20 feet. There's a blue, a blue marker. Uh, could be the uh, ones that were here on the road get chopped down or something. But here we go. I guess that's a maple, a big maple, knobby maple. How about that for burls? All right, we're at uh, a campsite here between kilometer 36 and 37. We've been seeing some huge trees along the way. This is a black, or spruce, maybe black. It's straight as an arrow, and it's at least, at least six feet around. Probably seven feet. There's another one there. And there's a beach. Oh. This is a beach over here, and it's got to be at least 10 feet around. I'm six feet, so it's huge. And that's what we've been seeing all, all along this old growth forest. Uh, it's pretty impressive, and uh, it's worth the cost of admission. Here's one of the wind turbines. I don't know if you can hear it, but. Uh, Definitely has a hum to it. We're on the logging road uh, after kilometer 38. It's a nice uh, dry uh, road to uh, hardwood stand. It's very beautiful. On kilometer 39, we're running into a lot of this. I'm not sure what it is. It kind of looks like uh, West Coast Salal. If anybody uh, knows what it is, uh, just comment in the below the video that'd be great thanks Patrick doing the evening chores stocking up with water for the day tomorrow we're at uh, kilometer 40 and we decided to camp here uh, by the uh, big spruce it's got a bit of a campfire here we collected water down at Hayward Brook which is about half kilometer downhill and uh, we put four liters 
uh, in our uh, collapsible jug and treated it. And this is what you do while you're waiting for the water to get treated. Real nice campsite. It's pine, spruce, soft floor. Should be comfy. Here we are at the end of day two. Uh, kilometer marker 40, I believe, and 40. we've uh, we, 40.7. So, uh, Patty just boiled up some water. Peter's got a fire started. We're going to have some supper. Another good day. Uh, warm again, hot today. Uh, we can feel the coldness in the air. We're getting closer to the shore, so probably going to have a good sleep tonight. So, uh, just going to turn things around here and get get a uh, an idea of what uh, what they're having for supper Peter what's uh, what's on the menu for you tonight creamy beef and noodles so Ooh. I'll look all that up guys when I show it to you like this but noodles got a creamy sauce in there looks like red peppers and mushrooms oh good Very nice I should fill the hole yep and Patrick one apple one chicken Oh, uh, like peas and carrots. And Got a Hawaiian theme. That's no, Asian. How are you going to pick out the peas and carrots? I'm eating them. Oh, you are. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty hungry. So. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, got a little fire started here for cooking and uh, keep the bugs away. So, uh, we'll probably talk to you again in the morning. One of the prime hiking rules look after your feet. <laughs> Day three, just uh, past uh, kilometer 41, and you can see it's a little bit overgrown. It rained last night, and uh, gonna keep the dust down. And uh, pretty straight going here. A little rocky, a little slippery with the wet wood, but uh, all in all, shaping up to be good. Here we are on the Kent Road at 41.5. Two or three kilometers of road walking, it looks like. Yeah, we got two kilometers to go. There's a glimpse of uh, Blackwood Lake. We're just uh, hiking by it. We're not going to stop. After quite a bit of uh, road walking, we're on a snowmobile trail. Up, 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 and up. Now this hill you can have a maple syrup run on it. Here we are on day three at the western terminus of the Dobson Trail. We left this morning around 8 o'clock and uh, made it here, uh, I guess it's 1.30. Pretty good time. A lot of it's road mileage, this uh, last section coming west. And, but it was the wettest spot as well that uh, we had to wade, wade some bogs. So um, I'm just trying to brush the deer flies away here. Uh, anyway, good trip. Uh, turned out nice, rained overnight, but cleared off and uh, we stayed dry the rest of the time. <laughs> Patrick, how do you enjoy the Dobson? What would, you, uh, what would you tell people about whether they should do it or not or what tips would you give? Uh, it's a good trail. There's some swampy areas. Uh, we were lucky that it was fairly dry at this point that um, you know I couldn't imagine if it was like a couple day of, a couple days of rain. Uh, could have been pretty bad but um, the good thing about it is there's lots of uh, out options so if you want to just do a day or two days and someone can pick you up. Also if you're just getting into hiking and you don't want to carry all your stuff um, you can get people to drop stuff off. Uh, at different locations um, so it's a great trail to really get into hiking um, or you can you know do three days and carry everything or uh, if you're really really look for a challenge you could do a two-day trip so it was uh, lots of fun and highly recommend uh, Philip uh, how'd you enjoy the trip uh, would you recommend anybody trying it absolutely it's uh, it was more than I, more than I thought it was going to be very challenging uh, probably the biggest recommendation is your footwear. 
make sure you've got really good footwear, uh, lots of angle support. Uh, we've both got blisters on our on our insteps, so which really it hinders your your progress for sure. So invest in a good pair of uh, hiking boots. As far as trail markings and, and the, the volunteer group that, that work at this, they do an excellent job. I can't imagine what would uh, what would be involved with doing that 57 kilometers and marking it and keeping the trails clean. And so uh, big shout out to the group that are doing that. And I would recommend it for sure. Uh, just uh, be prepared and uh, you're gonna have a good experience. Yeah, I really enjoyed uh, that uh, trip. It's right up there with the Fundy Circuit and uh, Cape Chignecto hike for multi-day trips. Uh, for advice, uh, any tips, make sure you get the guide uh, that the Dobson uh, Committee Association puts out and also follow the blue. When in doubt, follow the blue markers. Hope you get to try it. Um, I'm sure you'll enjoy it and um, see you out there.